Welcome back to Dielectric Videos. I can't believe it, but it's already been over another year since I did my last update video on this 91 cent USB charger. And uh, once again, I have had no need to replace it or do any modifications to it. It's pretty much been completely rock solid in general purpose service for USB power uh, applications. In fact, it's actually been over two years since I started using this. Uh, the video that would have come out for the two year anniversary would have been in March and it's already May, but it really goes to show it's been such a uh, set it and forget it solution that I have really not even run into anything that would remind me that uh, I need to do a video on that, which is pretty awesome. That being said, I thought I'd use this as an opportunity to highlight some of the cool modifications and uh, custom build, uh, particular custom battery build that I did for this project in order to really make it completely standalone and completely seamless. Uh, so I'll show you that now. So what I've built here is a significant, uh, significantly high capacity uh, 1S by, I think this is, I don't even know how many in parallel, probably 20 or 30 in parallel, uh, battery pack using 18650 and 25650 cells that are actually used cells that I was going to take to the recycling center, but instead I thought might uh, serve a second life use as basically a reserve power bank. So uh, I'll show you the inside of this. If you open this up, it shows basically what's inside here. So I've got a whole bunch of banks of old skateboard batteries. These are old 18650s that came out of a skateboard battery that had a set of failed cells uh, that wouldn't balance properly and wouldn't hold capacity anymore. And a few new 26650s that I had uh, bought from EBL. These are kind of lower end cells uh, that are pretty well suited to this application. Now this box uh, employs a TP4056 charge circuit to regulate the charge voltage. And I did a bit of custom work to get this to basically cut off charging at 4.1 volts instead of 4.2 since I wanted these batteries to last a long time in service and I knew they were going to spend a long a large amount of their life basically at full charge. So what this is is basically a timer that intermittently disconnects the battery uh, bank every few minutes for just like a half a second from the power source, which basically causes the 4056 to go into its, uh, if it's between 4.1 and 4.2, it'll basically say that it's fully charged and it will not start charging again until it falls back down below 4.1. And then on top of that, I've basically added a couple of just USB power converters. These are uh, just step up modules that go from the th 3 to 4.2 volts up to 5 volts. And one of these can do a 2 amp maximum, one of them can do a 1 amp. And they're basically just there for allowing me to use USB power off of this. Uh, so yeah, the main purpose of this box is basically to provide a uh, basically a really big buffer between the relatively slow rate uh, USB charger that makes about 300 milliamps and whatever devices I want to plug in, whether they be power banks, camera battery chargers, uh, AA and AAA NICAD chargers, my phone of course, uh, among all different other USB devices that I end up using. So this is basically the intermediary between these two devices. And in case you were wondering, I actually did completely discharge this down to 0% state of charge, or about 2.6 volts per cell, before I started charging it with the USB adapter. So this really has been charged from the ground up completely by only that USB charger. It did take two weeks to do it, but it eventually got there. And having the box also gives an additional benefit of safety and protection. If there was a primary to secondary isolation fault, uh, the box would not actually protect against a shock hazard, but it would protect the device plugged in from overvoltage. So if this suddenly started putting out like 10 volts, it would blow the 4056 out and it would the batteries would basically prevent any uh, surges from coming through the USB onto the other devices. So now that I've had this USB charger in service for over two years powering all of my devices, and it's proven itself to be both capable and reliable, I have to decide what I want to do with it next. One option is I could just continue using it. I mean, it's been a pretty good charger. It's shown itself to be reliable and I have all the infrastructure set up to continue using it for general purpose charging. Uh, another option is I can upgrade this lithium manganese and lithium cobalt oxide based battery pack to a much more long lasting, long term sustainable battery pack based on one of these huge lithium titanate cells. By the way, the uh, project with these is probably gonna come up in a future video where I'm gonna be using five of these to build a very large reserve bank for a solar installation. But I could use one of these as basically a replacement for this storage system, and I think that could be quite effective. So if I want to keep it uh, and continue using it, that might be the 
path that I take. A second option, though, is that I could actually send this in to one of my other favorite YouTubers to potentially do a teardown and review. I think that could be especially interesting not only because, you know, it would be sort of a second pair of eyes looking at the same circuit that I did two years ago, but on top of that, it's also such an interesting novel circuit with a single transistor uh, operating a fully functional full range switch mode power supply. I think such an interesting design would definitely turn some heads over at the EEV blog on Big Clive's channel or maybe even on AVE's channel. Uh, so those, all of those places could potentially be interesting places to send this charger. I could also send it to Diode Gone Wild since he's actually done a lot of reviews on these dodgy USB chargers. And in, uh, I don't think on any of his videos I've seen one with a single transistor topology. The closest thing I've ever seen looked very similar to this, but it had an 8-pin micro or an 8-pin switch mode power supply controller in it, not a single transistor. So pretty interesting stuff for sure uh, for whatever channel if I decide to actually send it off somewhere. So what I'm uh, interested in from you guys, the viewers, is uh, leave in the comments a suggestion for what I should do with this charger. Uh, should I send it to another YouTuber? Should I continue using it? Uh, should I try to do something else with it? Uh, maybe a different project or some other experiments with it? Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments. Regardless though, thank you for uh, watching this quick little video on what I've worked on and what I've done over the last year with this charger. And I hope you continue watching uh, in the future. See you next time.